Hello, I'm Ray Motor from ACG and welcome to another edition of the Hot Seat. Joining me today is Rami Rahim from Juniper Networks. Rami, welcome to the Hot Seat. Thank you, Ray. And I think you've been a long time fan and a first time participant, is that correct? I have been looking forward to this for quite some time. That's awesome. Well, welcome. As you know, in the Hot Seat, what we do is we gather questions from carriers, from Wall Street and the media after an announcement. And, and at Mobile World Congress, you had an announcement which was basically an extension to the SDN portfolio, and it was related to all layers of what you call this high IQ network. Mm -hmm. What is a high IQ network, and, and why should service providers care about this? Yeah, there's a lot of attention that's being paid to cloud today. And when I think about cloud, it's the delivery of information services from large-scale multi-tenant data centers to the producers and users of that uh, those information services. And if you look at where networking fits in this um, uh, diagram, the networks are responsible for connecting data centers together. The networks are mandatory to connect the users to those data centers and of course all of the various different elements within the data center. Scale and capacity has always been a really important attribute of these networks. Increasingly, I think our customers are looking for much more software-driven innovation. Innovation that can improve the operational efficiency of these networks. Innovation that can extract data and translate it into insight that can help us better monetize. And innovation that can help us secure these networks. So all of these are attributes of high IQ. Interesting. Now now, part of this announcement, could you explain a little bit about what you mean by automate, create, and scale, or automate, scale, create framework, and how that ties everything together? Sure. You know, when I think about automate, scale, and create, uh, these are words that describe what I would say are frontiers of innovation okay. and networking. Right. Take automation. Mm -hmm. In the compute world, there are few people that have to go down to program an assembly language because there are these things called compilers. Assembly, I haven't heard that in a while. That, that translate okay. high-level abstract instructions down to the machine-specific, OS-specific stuff. Okay. The moral equivalent is required to crush operational costs in networking. Mm -hmm. uh, SDN can act as that compiler. Um, when you think about scale, there is the more traditional means of scale with um, silicon innovation and systems innovation that's really, really important. Mm -hmm. But increasingly now, I think customers are looking for more, again, software-driven innovation that mm -hmm. can look across layers and optimize the use of their right. existing infrastructure or new infrastructure. Right. And the creation is really about introducing vast amounts of agility mm -hmm. to the delivery of new services. Okay. There are too many barriers to introduction of new services. This of course is where NFV comes in, mm -hmm. but NFV is not just about virtualization. Virtualization is a means to an end. Right. The end is automation and orchestration, which provides vast ease, much more um, ease in terms of how those services are delivered to the end users. Right. Okay. Now, now, part of this announcement, there was a new term, a uh, new controller, which was a North Star network controller. I mean, Juniper says that it, it touches uh, on all layers, all domains, uh, and kind of creates an open SDN solution opportunity there. What are some of the use cases that you see in that? And the second part of the question, of course, is the obvious one is, how do you compare that controller to the existing contract controller? Sure, it's a good question. Contrail really focuses on delivering automation to networking within a data center to mm -hmm. basically catch up with the automation that has happened in the compute side. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of our customers are looking at Contrail and uh, deploying it for that specific application. Mm -hmm. And the service provider edge, Contrail provides that seamless service stitching and mm -hmm. orchestration of services, whether they reside on a physical platform like the MX mm -hmm. or stacks of general compute x86 type uh, servers that sit next to the MX. The point here is you want to provide a very seamless stitching of services irrespective of where they come so that the service client gets all of the benefit without necessarily knowing of understanding how those services right. are delivered. Right. Um, Northstar, on the other hand, works across the WAN. Mm -hmm. So Northstar will do things like multi-layer packet and optical mm -hmm. optimization by looking end-to-end -end and looking across layers. Mm -hmm. Northstar does things like bin packing mm -hmm. and um, uh, defragmentation. Mm -hmm. So over time, as service providers stitch LSPs, tear them down, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and bring them up, 
what you'll see is you'll have pockets of unused bandwidth mm. and there are some very sophisticated algorithms that are required right. to go and to defragment yeah. uh, and so North Star will do that. Mm -hmm. The last example I'll just say is uh, path diversity. Mm -hmm. If a service provider is looking to connect two endpoints in their network and they want to make sure that there's complete redundancy, mm -hmm. North Star, uh, that controller can actually provide and uh, or make sure that mm -hmm. the the paths that are taken don't overlap from a physical mm -hmm. location standpoint, yeah. which of course increases the uh, resiliency of the connection. Right, I guess from a centralization perspective, that's where the simplicity comes mm -hmm. into play. Now let's talk about open standards. There, there seems to be a lot of confusion on open standards these days. Uh, uh, how serious is Juniper really about open standards and you know what makes you different in that space? Very serious. You know, I've been at Juniper for a long time and from the very first product that we shipped, we recognize that as a challenger, you really need to make sure that you fit in heterogeneous environments. Mm -hmm. And that DNA has persisted with us throughout the years. Uh, in this day and age of SDN and NFV, there are even more interfaces that are being created mm -hmm. where you have to maintain openness uh, and adherence to standards. So it's no longer just about the network elements uh, communicating to each other, but they're about the standards you use to connect the controller to the mm -hmm. network elements, the controller to other controllers. Right. All of these are critical. Our right. customers don't want lock-in, right. and we don't want to give them anything that okay. will lock them in. Right. So it's very important to us. Well, good. Well, you're officially off the hot seat. Hopefully but, it wasn't too bad. No, it was great. Thank you, Ray. Awesome. With Rami, I'm Ray Moda. Thanks for joining this edition of the Hot Seat.